when you get a capacitor with a low resistance means your capacitor is bad we have 320 microfarad and 2.5 volts we have a low resistance in the multimeter this is not a short this is the resistance of the cpu so as you can see here we have many types of capacitors this is tantalum capacitors and over here we have ceramic capacitors so first we're gonna put the multimeter to the buzzer option or to the continuity option as you can see here now we're gonna check and test the ceramic capacitors here this is the cpu circuit so let's check these two capacitors so normally the capacitor should not give any continuity as you can see also for this capacitor it gives a high resistance okay when you get a capacitor with a low resistance means the capacitor is bad so for these capacitors all these three are good capacitors now we're gonna see some capacitors in the chipset circuit exactly the GMCA circuit here for the chipsets as you can see you can find some capacitors with a low resistance but this is not a short circuit this is normal so the low resistance is the resistance of the chipsets itself okay so we're gonna check these capacitors so this is the back of the GMCH okay here as you can see so even if we have 080 means this value is is normal okay because this is a gym's heat circuit let's check this also as you can see so let's check this capacitor so here as you can see we have a very low resistance okay as you can see let's check again we have a low resistance 022 this low resistance is the resistance of the chipsets of the GMCH. Okay, so this capacitor is not short to the ground. No, this is normal with the GMCH. Okay, and also the same for the graphic card and the ICH. We have 320 microfarad and 2.5 volts. How to test and check electrolytic capacitors? So, as you can see here, we have many types of capacitors this is tantalum capacitors and over here we have ceramic capacitors i'm gonna show you how to test electrolytic capacitors as you know the electrolytic capacitors are polarized capacitors okay as you can see we have plus and minus so this means minus okay so here we have the capacitor characteristics as you can see we have 320 microfarad and 2.5 volt so for every electrolytic capacitor it has a specific characteristics of course we're gonna use the multimeter and, and we're gonna select the continuity option as you can see okay so the capacitor is failed when you get a continuity or a buzzer okay you should never get a continuity while testing an electrolytic capacitor so let's check here we have a low resistance this is this is not a short this is normal you know why because this capacitor is near to the chipset so this capacitor is near to the chipset this is the salt bridge or ICH so the low resistance is the resistance of the chipset so always pay attention all the capacitors near to chipsets and processor when you get a low resistance this is normal okay but if you check another capacitor in any power supply you can find a high resistance so let's check this capacitor for example so normally this we should get a high resistance as you can see here okay so this is a good capacitor okay so here as you can see we have the cpu power supply where we have inductors and electrolytic capacitors so this capacitor also if we test it we're gonna obtain a low resistance as you can see we have a low resistance in the multimeter this is not a short this is the resistance of the cpu so if we remove the cpu 
the resistance will be changed. So let's remove the CPU right now and check again the capacitors. Now we remove the CPU. So let's check the capacitor. Normally we should not get a low resistance. As you can see in the multimeter we get one. Two capacitor is good. Okay. Let's check this also. This is a good capacitor. But when we put back the CPU, as you can see, we get a low resistance. Okay, so this is normal. Here we have other kind of capacitors, of course. As you can see here, we have the power drag connector. So this capacitor basically should give a high resistance or give just one in the multimeter, as you can see. So this is a good capacitor. We okay. can see the capacitor symbols. So as you can see here, we have many symbols here. Okay. So these symbols, as you can see, these six symbols is for polarized capacitor. And these three symbols is for no polarized capacitor. Okay. So for polarized capacitor, it has the plus and the minus. So you can find this kind of symbol, as you can see, with plus here. And also we can find this kind of capacitor without plus and minus, but always the top terminal is the plus. Okay. Also, this is a polarized capacitor, plus and minus. Also this, plus and minus. And for this also, okay. So basically, all these are polarized capacitor. So this two symbols is a U key symbols. And those are AUS symbols. Okay, but the most used symbol for the polarized capacitor is this. Okay, this one and this one. Okay, and over here we have a non polarized capacitor as you can see. So this is for ceramic capacitors. Okay, so as you can see here, these three capacitors, as you can see, this is, this is tantalum capacitors, as you can see polarized capacitor and this is electrolytic capacitor and over here we have ceramic capacitor okay so this symbol is for the ceramic capacitors and these three symbols are for polarized capacitors as you can see and here if you focus so this is the capacitance of this Capacitor 470, 470 microfarad. Okay, this also, as you can see, we have 17 microfarad and we have 16 volts. And for this kind of capacitor, this is, we have here 100 microfarad and 50 volts. Let's see in this motherboard also, as you can see here. Okay, so we have here two chemical capacitor or polarized capacitors okay this sign this blue part is a minus and the other part is for the positive terminal okay so this kind of capacitors you should pay attention if you want to install it you should respect the polarity okay it's not like a ceramic capacitor for the ceramic capacitor, you can solder it or connect it to the motherboard randomly. But for this kind of capacitors, you should respect the plus and minus. As you can see here, always you can find these capacitors near to the inductor. Okay, because this is a filtering capacitor. Okay, near to the inductor or coil, as you can see. So in every circuit, you will find this kind of capacitors. In this motherboard also, as you can see, so we have two capacitors here with the black color. The black color means the minus, okay? Here also, as you can see, this is SMT chemical capacitor, okay? This is also a polarized capacitor with plus and minus, as you can see. This kind of capacitor also, you should respect the polarity. The same working principle. You can find this capacitor also near to the inductors. Okay, always the capacitor is near to the inductor. So, in every circuit, you will find capacitors and inductors. Okay. 
So here, as you can see, we have also this kind of capacitor, the black capacitors near to the inductor, as you can see. So let's see this motherboard also. We will see many motherboards in order to go deeper into understanding capacitors. So these yellow capacitors also are a chemical capacitors. As you can see, we have here inductor and capacitor. This is the inductors and capacitor means a circuit. In the motherboard, there is many circuits. The 3.3 the 3 .3 volt, 5 volt circuit, the, the VCC core circuit, the plus VCCP circuit, 1.5, 1.8 circuit, etc. So here also we have this kind of capacitor, as you can see, with this color, okay, orange color. This is also capacitors near to the CPU and to the GMC hedge, as you can see. Here, as you can see, this is normal capacitors. This is polarized capacitors. Okay, so this is all about the SMT capacitors and chemical capacitors.